Hello and welcome to Eye on Humanity. I am your host, Leticia Ponce Diaz, sort of your host. Um, I'd like to describe myself as being an observer tonight, uh, as uh, being a learner tonight, and hopefully uh, coming up with questions that you might be wondering about. We have a great show and we have a beautiful lady sitting here who's ready to tell us all about herself. Zena Romanda, welcome to your own show here. <laughs> well, hi. I don't feel like it's really my show. I'm just kind of a visitor for a few minutes. You are. You're a visitor for a few minutes. You're going to take off in about five minutes, right? So we right. better get to know you before you leave here. Okay. Um, in all seriousness, you, and I'm going to say this correctly, you do what is called a full body manifestation, and St. Germain speaks through you. Well, St. Germain enters the body, and my consciousness, consciousness completely leaves. Um, and I go to a, a plane that is of another dimension. Okay. And now, before you start describing that, mm -hmm. let's go back a little bit. Okay. How and when did all of this start? Well, it was um, in April of 86, and there was a lot of energy in the house. And, I, and you, you could feel energy we could in the house? Sense it was like electric. We? My husband and I. Okay. And then whenever I passed the area where the energy was most, you know... Um, Concentrated? Right. Uh -huh. Then I stopped and I was it was over in a direction of a plan in our house mm -hmm. and I started feeling like a human sparkler and then he came over to me and said are you alright are you alright and I could hear him but I couldn't respond it was like I was almost like paralyzed or something although it was I wasn't afraid in that moment and then mm -hmm. I went dark and went black mm -hmm. and then a little bit later I came back and my husband told me what happened and I just didn't know what to think I thought he was pulling my leg and and all right were you frightened by the experience or was there something pleasant about it initially I was I was mm, scared like anybody else would be scared if something unknown had happened to them and they didn't know what to make of it yeah um, so he convinced me to sit down on the couch and let it happen again and so I, I sat down on the couch and did my spiral meditation. Now, how did you know to do that? And how did you know that doing that would help bring the experience back again? I didn't. It was just kind of trial and error. I just thought, well, it's the only thing I know how to do, so we'll just see and what mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. And I had learned that in um, a meditation class mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I had never had any training. I never had any thought of being um, um, an instrument for something like this, I, you know, it just yeah. never occurred to me. So I sat down and did the only thing I knew how to do, that was the only class I'd ever taken. To meditate. Right. And two hours later, I came back and I said, well, did anything happen? And my husband said, before I answer that, I'd like for you to listen to this. And so he turned on the recorder, because this time he had recorded it, and it blew me away. I was crying, I was shaking, I was scared. I didn't know what to make of it or what to do with it. And that was Germain, St. Germain speaking through you and your husband had recorded it. Right, and um, he had identified himself as St. Germain, and so my husband came back and he said, have you ever heard the name St. Germain? And I said, no, I have the foggiest idea, and he said, neither have I. So we went and got our books and looking on the index to see if we could figure out who St. Germain was. And we called some of our friends saying, have you ever heard the name St. Germain before? Do you have any idea what it's all about? Mm -hmm. And so gradually we're finding out more and more about who he is. Um, in, 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 and I will find out in more detail who he is, but in a few words, can you well, identify him? Well, his energy him? has been known before as Joseph, the mm -hmm, father of mm -hmm. Jesus, Christopher Columbus, um, Francis Bacon, mm -hmm. um, 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 let me think, Prokles, the Greek philosopher. So he's been around. Right, and he had a lot to do with the Declaration of Independence and beginning this country. And he was also, this is exciting, I love this part. All right, tell us this part, um, this is exciting. When, when he was the prophet Samuel, mm -hmm. and... Um, when he had a lot to do with the inspiration of the beginnings of the, the Declaration of Independence in right. this country and everything, he, his energy was so involved in it, he came to be known as Uncle Sam. And, his energy did. But this you have learned through St. Germain telling you. That and uh, other people you, right? that have been familiar with his energy for years okay. and years and years. And very soon now we're going to get ready because you are actually right here in, in front of us. We've got friends in the audience. Um, you're going to go away. And we're going to actually see you do this. We're going to see you get very quiet. We're going to see you do your meditation. And uh, we're not going anyplace. We're going to be watching. So any time that you're ready, we'll let you go. And okay. we'll welcome St. Germain. OK. Right? Um, sure. And um, it's not anything Anything you want to say before you go? Do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's not something that I'm afraid to do uh -huh. because it's become almost second nature to me. And, and through feeling the love vibration and knowing that my, I'm always safe and secure and that nothing is going to happen, 
um, I am very, very comfortable with it now. Okay. And, and um, so I want to share this with the world and whoever is open to it. And, you know, there's just a lot of love. And here goes. Okay. I begin by centering so that my consciousness can completely leave my body and allow St. Germain to totally incarnate into it. In this case, there isn't a blending of energies at all. It's um, fully capacitated with St. Germain's energy, so I'm not at all consciously aware of what's occurring while he's here in my body. Where I go is to other dimensions to experience other realities. I don't bring back any conscious memory of most of them. Sometimes there's fragments like purple legs and things like that. But usually it's just a void of time where um, I don't have any conscious memory at all. It's always with mutual choice and agreement that this happens and I'm not afraid at all. He expresses so much love and so much respect for us that there's just not anything at all to be afraid of. I get into a center state of being and I go through a spiral meditation that was taught by Dr. Bru Joy. And when my chakras have all been opened, I raise my kundalini energy and I feel it moving up my spine. When it reaches near the crown area, I feel as though I'm surrounded by something. It kind of feels like a tunnel. And at the end of it is a gigantic brilliance and I seem to just flow towards it. The closer I get, the faster I go until it's something like warp speed. I don't ever remember reaching the light. I get almost to it, and then the next thing I know, I'm back. So, here I go. Greetings, my beloved. Greetings, St. Germain. How are you this day of the time? <clears throat> I'm doing quite well. How are you? Is there, is there any other way to be but the one of us? Sometimes we forget. Welcome. Indeed, it is my honor. We were talking to the woman, Azina, um, and we started asking her a little bit about who St. Germain was, mm. and she gave us several lifetimes and several identities. Can you expand a little bit on who you are? I am that which life itself reveals. I am indeed that which you call your mirror. That which you gaze upon is the reflection of yourself. Indeed, I come unto you because I love you and you have called that which is the essence of the council of light upon this plane to allow and love and embrace you back unto yourselves. I am your equal. I am your brother that abides with you in communion. That which is the brilliance and the grandeur of you, I understand. I am here so that you may understand it. All right, two things here. Council of Light, can you mm. expand a little bit on that? That which is a consciousness, a body of essence energy that is associated with all that is, with that which you call the grand creative force, 
of life, the essence of God, if you will. And it creates its own heart's desire to come upon this plane, to allow the entities recognition of their own divine sourceness. You are here so that each one of us in the studio and outside the studio can recognize their divinity or their beauty. Indeed, to open the flower of you as it were, to become a garden of gods resplendent in array. And truly, my beloved, it is my honor and I bow in humility in the recognition, in awe, in wonderment of that which is you. It is my honor to, to participate in this fashion. Why do you say that when I think I speak for many of us those of us that are interested in metaphysics and spirituality have a tendency to put entities, beings like you, on a pedestal. And our feeling is that you are greater, you are more evolved, you are higher, and yet you say it's an honor to be here amongst us. Mm. My grandest gift that I wish to give you is for you to see yourself as I do. There is no pedestal that is higher than another. All are of equal height. All are to be revered, for all are divine. Was there a particular reason, St. Germain, that you chose this time, maybe not necessarily this woman, but this time to come with this kind of um, mission? Mm, indeed. Changes are in the wind, have you not noticed? <laughs> yes, I was hoping you'd talk about those a little bit. <laughs> There are many to be sure, and we shall discuss some of them. Right. Okay. However, there is a shift in an entire frequency band upon the plane, from the Piscean era to the Aquarian era, that which some call the New Age. And it is an understanding of the release of dogma, ritual, and limitation into the understanding of the beauty of life in the flow, to be free-flowing, if you will. What can we do to not only be more prosperous, but be happier at this time when you might say there's a, a type of recession, when pocketbooks are straining, when people are having a hard time paying bills, saving money, buying houses. Mm. And life is a grind, eh? And life is a grind, <laughs> yes. But you know you may allow this grindstone to polish you up. Hmm? Okay. Mm. That what you call a purchasing of a lay awake plan Mm -hmm. Lay awake plan. And yes. they fret about the business, that which if you don't have any, you go out of. <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh. Mm. And they place themselves on a budget that allows you to pay as you go if you don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You've been observing us a long time, haven't you? <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. It causes concern. Mm. But prosperity hides itself in thought before it surrenders itself to the purse. That which is prosperity is not the heights of attainment, it is the hearts of attunement. It is not that which you call your sleepless nights. It is wide awake nows. Truly, that which is so fervently seek and search, that which you so wish to be experienced in your life, that which you... So